right, we are back in that book of Revelations. Many of you know that we were looking at the seven churches there in Revelation uh, chapter 2 and 3. And uh, we, we stopped to, uh, uh, to, take, to, to worship during our Easter season and learn a little bit more about this Christ who not only died for us, but rose again on that third day for us. Uh, but we're going to jump back here and take a look at this next church, which is church number five, the church at Sardis. All right. Now, this church is, is a little bit different than what we have been looking at, uh, and not really in a good way. If you remember, the great thing about the way Christ does things is he always started off by saying, hey, I know your works and, and I know you've been doing these things and they're good things. I just have a few things I want to work, we need to work on. But here we see something different. So let's take a look here in verse 1 of chapter 3, Revelation chapter 3, the church at Sardis. And to the angel of the church in Sardis write, these things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Ooh. Don't click it back to that previous slide to stay there. Oh, goodness. Did y'all just hear that? Jesus himself has said, you've got a reputation. There are people around that think you're alive, but your church is dead. Oh, man. Well, let's see what, he, what, 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 he, what he's saying here. Let's take a look at it. Let's start off from the beginning. If you remember, let's recap just a little bit about what we talked about, about these, these particular churches. And when he says to the angel of the church in Sardis, that angel is not necessarily a spiritual being or, or a angelic being in that form, but it could be a messenger, it could be the pastor. But he's sending a message to these churches to be given out by someone to these churches. He says, I want them to understand these things. And here he says, these things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Now that's a little bit different than what he has been saying. He has been saying he that, that walks amongst the, the lampstands, right, and has the stars in his hand. This is a little different. He who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Just as a little bit of a, a, a note so you help you understand that. You all understand what the spirit is, right? I don't know if you do or not. Uh, we are kind of made up like God in some ways. And one of the ways is there's three parts to us. Okay. The Bible speaks of the flesh, right? This is the part that became corrupt as we, as we chose sin there in the garden. The flesh became corrupt. And now it draws us towards things that are evil, towards things that are destructive. You don't believe that? Why else would someone do drugs? Why else would someone do, you know, overeat? <laughs> Why else would someone do these things to their bodies in a destructive manner? Because we're drawn to these things. These become the lusts of the flesh, as you might say. All right, so we're made up of flesh, but we also have a soul. The soul is kind of like, the, the, it's easiest way for, for, for like teenagers and stuff. I say, just close your eyes and think, okay, not this outside, but me, who I am. If you're a Star Trek fan, your consciousness, <laughs> you, whatever you want to say. But the point is really who you are. That part of you that is really who you are, that is your soul, okay? But then there's one part that if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, this part of you is dead. But that part is called the Spirit. And the Spirit is only made alive upon salvation in Jesus Christ. So what is the Spirit? Well, we describe it this way. The flesh is what draws us to the things of the world. The flesh is what keeps us and ties us to this world. The soul is the decision-making process. The soul determines the things that we're going to do. It makes the decisions. It's who I really am. It's what will be saved through eternity. But then the spirit. The spirit is that which connects man to God. And when Adam and Eve chose sin, it died. So upon salvation, that spirit comes back. So here, what, what is he saying that he holds the seven spirits of God? How many churches are there? He holds on to that connection. 
And they're going to need it because he does not have good things to say about them. But understand, even when we fall, even when we recognize that we're in a place we better not be, are we still in his hand? Yes. God still is connected with this church. He has not left. Though they have not done a good job, he has not left them. And then, of course, the seven stars in the hand. That, that represents the, 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 really the messengers, maybe the pastors, the leaders within those churches. They are in his hand. And he will bless them to lead and bring them where they need to be. So he says, and of course this is, yeah, we, know, we know who's speaking here, right? Who's speaking? Jesus, that's right. So he says, I know your works. He said that about many, right? And then he usually goes on to say that you've been faithful and you've been doing a lot of good things and everything is, and, and you're doing good stuff there. I, I know your works, but here's something different. He says, I know your works, that you have a name that you are alive. People around you, maybe other churches, they look at you and they think that you're alive. They say, hey, they're alive. Why are they alive? Well, they got a great music program. And, and they're alive because, because they, they, they have a good congregation that comes every Sunday, you know, numbers. Uh, maybe they're alive for all kinds of different reasons. I don't know. But they have a name that they're alive. People are looking at them and saying, hey, that's a live church. They have all kinds of good socials. They got all kinds of good stuff going on there. But Jesus says, though you have a name that you are alive, he says, but you are dead. Now, the word dead, I think you know what that means. Uh, I looked it up and you know what it means? It means no longer alive. <laughs> okay. But it also means something else. Right. It's the second definition is of a place or time characterized by a lack of activity or excitement okay so you know uh, I used to love to go to that uh, that restaurant you know on Friday night and it was so exciting and all but now it's it is these days it's just dead right something like that y'all know that term use it that way right well this is what Jesus is saying so you say lack of activity or excitement now activity is not necessarily just some things we do because there's a lot of churches I'll be honest with you that are probably dead but they keep the socials going and they, they, they make sure that they keep the music going and keep other things going. But are those, looking back to one of our previous churches, are those the first things that God desires from us? The Great Commission says that we are to do what? Go into all the world teaching and preaching what he has given us that is the gospel message of salvation there are churches all around that that have great socials and great church life and and the worship is oh wow the worship is so great and all of that but how many people are hearing the gospel message of jesus christ how many are coming to know him as their savior are they putting the priorities where they go so even though others may look in and say, hey, that's, a, that's an active church. They're, they're moving. Jesus, who knows the heart. You remember, remember in the Gospels when he would, somebody would walk up or he'd walk up to somebody and they'd say something and he'd go off in a different direction because he would look deep into their heart and he would know really where they are and what they needed, right? This is what he's doing here. People may think you're alive, but you're dead. Mm, sad, huh? Okay, so they're dead. Now here's where the church in the past has failed. Because many times we would go out into the world and we would proclaim that you are in sin. You are dead. You're going to hell. But they wouldn't take the time to continue on and answer the question, so what do we do now? What do we do about that? But of course Jesus does. All right, our next verse is verse 2 there. Here's what Jesus says to do about this. He says, be watchful. Now watchful, that's, that's watching or observing someone or something closely, alert and vigilant. You might say, okay, well, I know what watchful means. Yeah, but do you really think about that? 
If in your life right now, maybe you are not doing the things maybe that God has commanded you to do. Because church, here's really what God has commanded us to do. He's commanded us all to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's commanded His church to determine what your gifts, your talents, and your passions are. And to use those actively within your church, within your community, within your family. So if I went to you one by one by one by one this morning, church, and said to you, hey, what, what's your spiritual gift and what, what have you been doing to use, use that for the glory of God? Would you be able to go, oh, well, well, here's my gift and here's what I've been doing lately. Could you do that? If you're not active and there's no excitement in your faith, what does that make you? Dead. So what do you do? You watch. You stop just living life. But you stop. You look at the things of God. And begin to evaluate from there. Okay? So be watchful. And strengthen the things which remain. That are ready to die. You may know for a fact that you know Jesus Christ is your Savior. And that is great. And you may have studied the word, you have, you have good knowledge in here, and you've got some wisdom, you've got other things. But where is that going lately? You need to feed that. You need to strengthen that. What does that mean? I'll be honest with you, sometimes that means showing up to more than just Sunday morning service. Y'all, Wednesday night, I think that we have a great time, don't we, people? Those of you that come, and I think we're growing, aren't we? Sunday school. Sunday school. Even though Rob teaches it, it's not that boring. I'm just kidding. I'm joking, Rob. It's actually good. This morning we talked about things in the end times. How knowing those things can prepare us for what's to come. But it can also give us encouragement to know that he has a plan. He knows what's coming. Isn't that the scariest thing for us as the future? Not knowing something, isn't that about the scary? That's why the dark is so scary, because you can't see. You don't know really what's there. But God knows, and there's encouragement. So I want to encourage you, church is more than Sunday morning, y'all. Come and be a part, begin to grow. Find out who you are and what he has for you. But strengthen those things that you have that are ready to die. For I have not found your words works perfect before God. Well, I like uh, in some of the translations, specifically Christ Jesus says, before my God. The idea there is, um, now, Wednesday night crowd, does perfect mean you have to be perfect, never sin, never do anything wrong? No. Perfect means maturity, right? It means maturing. All right. So the idea is, is they got saved. They learned a few things here and there. But they never really matured to become something more. Uh, you know, many of you have children, grandchildren, that kind of thing. Uh, you have nieces and nephews, you have others. And we see in their lives, don't we get a little frustrated because, because they, they begin to grow up and as they begin to get into their teen years, they know that they're supposed to get up, brush their hair, brush their teeth, um, get dressed in something that matches, right? They're supposed to do that stuff. But then you say, did you brush your teeth? Yeah, let me look at them. It looks like they got Cheetos. All of them in the right in here where they missed. You know what I mean? Doesn't it? It's like they never, they, it's like you feel like they're never going to mature. They know what they're supposed to do. It's, I mean, it's right there. But they just don't do it. That's what this word means, maturing. And by the standard, that, that my God there, that Jesus is saying that, what he's talking about there is the holiness and the standard that God puts forth. So in according to the standard that God has put forth, are any of us making it? <laughs> Probably not. But some of us are maturing. It's a process. Not just an actively, you are this, perfection. But are you working towards that? And how do you do that? By just simply like a teenager. Don't miss this section right here. That you always miss. When you brush your hair in the morning. I know it's cool to have it all frizzy frizzied up and stuff these days. But, but go ahead and wet that thing down. If you got to, wash your hair. Okay? Brush it down. Get it looking nice. Don't worry. It looks all slick. But it'll dry and go poofy again. It's okay. Okay? So, the point is we're talking about here is maturity. 
Maturity. So work on those things because I have not found the maturity in you. Even though you know you're not doing the things that you're being taught. So verse 3, he says, So remember therefore how you have received and heard. How did you receive and hear? There are some who, have, who just directly found in the Word of God. Most, though, heard it from someone else in the church. Guess what? There's somebody waiting to hear from you. There's someone whose eternity, their life, their joy, their peace is just waiting on you to give them a little something that you learned in your maturing processes. So remember therefore how you received and heard. And then hold fast. I like to say that this is, this is gumption. You ever heard that old, old preacher words, holy gumption? I use this with, uh, with issues of, of mental health too. I, uh, many of you know that, that I had struggles myself uh, years ago. Come to find out it was from sleep apnea. I use a machine now at night and things. But essentially I had not slept in years is what the doctor said. And I struggled with depression and anxiety. It's been several years ago. Depression and anxiety, even went on medication for it. And had to, had to go to my dad and learn coping mechanisms and all kinds. I mean, it was a hard, hard, hard road right there. Some of you understand that. And one of the things I had to get to, to be honest with you. Now, there's a place for medication with clinical issues. There's a place for counseling and all of these kind of things. But there was also a place for me that I just need to pull up my big boy pants and do what I needed to do. I just had to sometimes force myself, will myself to get out of bed and just do what I need to do. <clears throat> this is kind of what we see here with this hold fast. I understand, he says, I, you know, it's like I understand where you are Watch for these things. Strengthen those things that you still have. Begin to mature. Remember, remember the things that affected you and begin to do that for others. But even though you are right now weak, even though you're in this, this state of being dead, hold fast. Get a holy gumption. Say, okay, I might have messed up, but God forgives me for that. Now I'm going to move forward. I'm not going to let this drag me down. Okay, I, did, I forgot to read my Bible today. Oh, gee whiz, guess what? I'm going to get up tomorrow and I'm going to read my Bible. Okay? I, for, I, didn't, I didn't even talk to God at all for the last three days. Okay, fine. God, forgive me for that tomorrow morning or, or right now. Kneel down and go and, and pray. Go to Him. Go before His throne. Quit thinking that these things, these mistakes, where we are, that we have to stay there. Or maybe God doesn't want us back. No, sometimes we got to hold fast. Sometimes we got to just get up there and say, All right, I messed up, God. God, I am so sorry. Please forgive me for that. And right now, God, I'm going to make a difference. Right now, I'm going to do something different, God. I'm going to make a change. So hold fast and repent. Now, many of you, you know, I just said, you know, God, forgive me. And many of you define that as repentance. That's, that's part of repentance. But remember, repentance is not just about saying, God, forgive me. It's about God, forgive me because the way I was thinking, the way I was going, everything about who I was and where I am was wrong. Now, repent means that I then turn a different direction and I begin going that way. That's the gumption I'm talking about. I messed up, God. I messed up. Thank you for your forgiveness. Oh, God, now I'm going to move forward. Now I'm going to pray. Now I'm going to read my Bible. Now I'm going to come to Sunday school and Wednesday night church. I'm going to, I'm going to be, tell somebody about Jesus. Tell someone that God loves them. I'm going to do something about it now. Repentance. All right. So good advice. But what if we choose not to follow it? Revelation 3, 1 through 6, or excuse me, uh, what verse are we on here? I messed up. I missed a thing here. Three, four. There we go. Four. <laughs> Revelation, verse four, three, four. Therefore, if you will not watch, all right, let me put this in context again. If you just keep living your everyday life and you're not worried about the things of God, I come to church on Sunday mornings, I'm good. 
I live a good life. I'm all right. But I got work. I got family. I got other things. If you will not watch, you will not pay attention to the things that I'm telling you. He says, I will come upon you as a thief and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. Anybody here ever saw, um, what was it called? The Angel, Angel and the Bad Man with John Wayne? Anybody ever see that? Oh, come on. She got one over here. Well, I, Amber and I watched that yesterday. Angel and the Bad Man. John Wayne. John Wayne's real young, okay? And he, he, he comes riding across the, the desert, and he's been shot, falls off his horse, and, and this man and his daughter come and get him, and, uh, and they're, um, oh, what were they? They were... Quake, not, not Quakers, but Puritans. So like, but anyways, anyways, they, they were they were uh, really good religious folks. Okay, uh, friends friends of, of something is what they called. But anyways, point being is is they believed in in not um, they believed in no violence. They believed in the, in man that man you know can be good. He can choose to be good. Things like this. So anyways, of course, John Wayne he's done things that he ought not to do. Okay. He's been back there and he's, 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 he's robbed some things. He's done other things. So she, they nurse him back to health. Of course, he falls in love with the girl. She falls in love with him. You know, but he's got to make a choice because he has a life to go for out here. He can go back to what he's doing. He has a name. When he speaks his name, people know. People do what he says. You know, if he pulls the gun, people do it, you know, period. He's just got this reputation. So he has to choose what he's going to live like. And now I say all this for one thing because I, w- I want to give you an idea here of, of what this is talking about. There's one particular part where he finally determines that he's going he's to love the girl and he's going to give up his ways and he's going to stay with her, okay? He's going to accept their teachings and what, what they're saying about Jesus and all and, and, and he's going to give up his gun. And he says about one of his enemies that's still out there. He says, well... He says, he says, I guess it, it, a guy that he wants to get revenge on, okay? He says, well, I guess this works just as good because his whole life, every time he eats, every time he does anything, he's going to expect me to come in that door. He said, so I guess that's just as good as killing him. Isn't that, would, wouldn't that be scary if you know somebody was out for you? You knew that somebody was out for you and, and that you just didn't know when? Or what time or exactly how it was going to happen. I mean, how would, what kind of life would that be, you know? To be honest with you, this is what Christ is saying to his children. How many of you have ever gone somewhere and say, no, I'm not going to call you when I head home. But when I get home, the house better be clean. And y'all better be doing right. <laughs> Teenagers especially get a little scared about that, right? Because they want you to call so they can run around real quick and get everything cleaned up and do it, right? But what if you don't tell them? You just show up. Ooh, scary. Be honest with you, I'm being funny here, but this is actually what Christ is saying. Listen, he didn't save you just so you get some fire insurance and go about your life as usual. He saved you to make a change and to reach others. He saved you to grow and become what he's already made you. He's made you his child, but to grow and become that child. To represent him to this world. And if you don't. He says. If you're not going to watch. If you're not going to do the things I say. I'll come as a thief in the night. You're not going to know when I come. And our last verse here. And I love this. Because here's the thing. Have you ever been scared? In fact on Wednesday nights. In. In. uh, Hebrews were at this because um, the author of Hebrews just really, really gave it to the church pretty hard. Um, Because really what they're doing in Hebrews is they're asking, is this faith worth it? Because they're going through a lot. And he, he was very soft with them. He tried to reassure them of who Christ is and all these great things in the first part of Hebrews. But he finally got to a point and said, listen, I want to tell you more about some things. But the problem is, is you're just dull. Because you have not been perfected. You're not maturing yourselves. You're like little babies sucking on a bottle. Instead of actually getting a hold of some meat. And moving and maturing. And the scary thing there as I keep noticing. And we're going to be talking about this Wednesday night. And then passages that is coming. Is that but then the author goes back and he recognizes. Now I'm not talking to everybody. 
Some of you are still doing good stuff. And that's what Jesus does here. And I love that. I love that because some of you are seeking him. Some of you are striving to mature and to grow. And I want you to know that, that, that Jesus has not forgot that. You know, sometimes it seems like, uh, what is it, the squeaky, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? And it seems like that sometimes. It's, it's about get yourself straightened up, get yourself straightened up. But sometimes we are, we're moving, we're trying. And I love that Jesus recognizes that here. In verse 4 he says, Nevertheless, you have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments. These are people that are still moving forward in their faith. People that are trying to grow, trying to spread the message of salvation and love for the world. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. I tell you, some of the, some of the preaching lately has been a little tough. It's been a little tough for me, to be honest with you. If you listen... Because I think, I don't want to say think, I believe, North Fort Baptist Church, I believe that God really wants to do something with this church. I believe that God desires to, to start from scratch and just build something here that reaches those that have never been reached before. That encourages those that are in dark, dark holes and valleys. A place that can... <laughs> that loves one another even more than themselves, that loves the people out there even more than themselves. And I think God really, really wants to do something. And maybe that's why the messages have been a little tough lately. But this message, I think, it's not that I think this church is dead. It's not. I wouldn't have come here if y'all were just dead. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't even come. But what I do think is that this church was at a, at a, at a place that it just sort of was functioning. It was just sort of moving along, but, but not really active, not really excited about what, what God has. And in many cases, kind of depressed. But I want to tell you, I believe that God wants to change that. But to change that, it starts with you. We've got coming up soon, I'm going to be asking to meet with the folks that work with the kids already and the youth uh, and some other places. We're going to get together. We're going to form kind of organized uh, youth ministry and children's ministries and, to start off with and then other things beyond that. But here's the thing. Right now, we're organizing records and stuff like this to kind of see who we've got. But right now, to be honest with you, we, for the work that is laid before us, I don't think we have the people to do it. We've got people that are willing, and you've got some people here that already are doing five or six things every single week, five or six different jobs. But what I'm saying to you, if you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you're ready to begin to do something different, like, like when he said begin to watch and then to, 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 to continue to grow and to mature and to move, if you're ready to do that, come, come talk to me sometime. Come let me know, preacher, I, I may not know what my spiritual gift is. I may not really know. Maybe I haven't worked in church things before. Maybe I don't know. But, but I believe that God wants me to do something. And I'll help you. I'll help you find a good place. A place maybe you can be an assistant to somebody who's, who's worked and ministered to children or teenagers or, or adults. Or, or, you know, there are things that we can help you find so that your faith is not just something that, that happens on Sunday morning but it's something that is moving and is active.